Hello, this is Overlord Bo. And today, I'll be covering the newest tier 10 French cruiser to be out of the game, the Brennus. Now, the Brennus, the longtime veterans will notice the name Brennus has been used before, namely to test the main battery reload consumable four was introduced to the Henry line. Now, this time around though, the Brennus represents an alternative version of the Henry with 305 millimeter guns. Now, this ship is gonna be available as of right now of 60,000 research bureau points. Now, if this ship overall is worth that, well, we'll find out in today's video. Uh, so pretty much, but see something really different from the Henry is that it has slightly less guns with seven 305 millimeter guns uh, with two twin turrets in the front and one triple turret in the rear. Uh, it has amazing kiting angles, uh, decent upfront angles as well. It does have the overmatch of 21 millimeters, which is very important versus ultra light cruisers like the Minotaur and Smolensk. You do have a nice comfortable range of 20.3 kilometers, which is really, really nice with a 13.5 second reload, which is extremely fast for a 305 millimeter uh, caliber guns. You also get cruiser accuracy, which is really nice uh for this ship so it makes it where you can use that ap on those broadside cruisers or battleships and get a lot of citadels and just have a fun time doing it you do get a 30 second turret diverse which is pretty which is okay but it does not have the mbrb unfortunately also this ship does not have hydro as well it only comes with the 20 percent engine boost the dcp and the heal which is really a major downside because a lot of the times if you don't have hydro you're going to be suffering from torpedoes or doing with submarines so a cruiser missing out on hydro nowadays is a real pain uh for sure now for the concealment this ship one of the downsides of this ship it does have a 13 kilometer best surface detection uh concealment which is really bad for a cruiser but due to the 305 millimeter guns, it has a consumption of 13 kilometers. So definitely be careful uh, when you're playing this ship to make sure you stay really far away. Because if you're anywhere near close and you get perma spotted, you try turning out in this thing. Uh, yeah, you're not going to have a fun time at all. So let's go talk about the whole of this ship. Pretty much it's basically the same as the Henry. You have a 53,300 HP pool, which is decent for a cruiser, but bad for a large cruiser standards with how large this ship is. You do have a 25 millimeter bow slash stern with a 30 millimeter deck and 30 millimeter side armor with a 140 millimeter belt armor and a 19% torpedo protection and a 60 second fire so instead of the regular normal uh fire on cruises of like 30 seconds this has 60 seconds so you'll be burning for a very 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 long time unfortunately uh but yes like i was saying earlier this is basically the same as the henry but with 60 second fires in a different turret armor thickness uh both primarily relies on dodging enemy attacks uh, this ship is very maneuverable for how big it is surprisingly uh but they're but again their black hole armor will occasionally save you if you accidentally go broadside as long as you avoid getting constantly set on fires she'll tank the same as her sister ship the henry now i've had a lot of issues in this ship with the hole where i would get citadel up the bum or uh, angle to the side they'll get that sweet spot on your rear or your front so definitely be careful on how you angle with this ship because if, you, if you're not careful you're just gonna get absolutely dev struck so definitely be careful uh when you play this ship now as i was saying earlier the brennis guns uh you have seven 305 millimeter guns two twin turrets in the front and one triple turret in the rear the guns behave more like marseille guns uh, so if you've played the heavy cruiser line for the french then you kind of know what i'm talking about in the regards of that but you do have two less guns and a permanent reload booster because of how fast the reload is now she will definitely absolutely slap the living daylight of any broadside cruiser or even battleship when they're close enough and unlike marseille her cruiser accuracy gives her even better reliability at punishing ships 
However, her HE DPM is very tragic and is outclassed by nearly every cruiser in the game. I do feel bad in this match as I was forced to use HE a lot in this match. I was barely even able to use any AP at all, which is this ship's main gimmick. Unfortunately, I didn't get to use the ship's main gimmick in this match. Uh, definitely really sad in that regard, but it pretty much is like around 12 kilometers, 13 kilometers in. Use, use that AP on those broadside targets, broadside cruiser battleships. You'll be slapping them for days. Basically, the uh, Brennus, the, the Brennus, lives to hunt cruiser broadsides and wants to avoid HD spam fights, if at all possible. Now, let's talk about the other ship's main armament is the torpedoes. You get four triple 550 millimeter torpedoes with six torpedoes per side. They do about 15,000 damage per torpedo and a nine kilometer range. Uh, they are better than the HIVs for rushing enemy ships at close range. A minor niche to being able to do that, but something worth keeping in mind since you have a better chance of nuking enemy ships. Uh, if you kind of rush them, uh, use the islands to your cover, rush around the island, get your torpedoes off, you'll do a lot of damage and nuke pretty much any target you face, uh, you face against. For the anti-air, it is notably weaker than the Henry's anti-air, sadly, which was not even good to start with. So just hope your 40 knot speed is good enough to dodge all of those incoming aircraft carrier strikes. For the ASW, you get, you get the standard tier 10 cruiser airstrikes, which is okay overall due to the 8 kilometer range. But we all wish it was a little bit longer, but it is what it is in that regard. For the maneuverability, you have a 35 knot top speed, which is really quick when combined with the 20% speed boost, which makes you the fastest cruiser in the game with a 840 meter turning radius, which is kind of wide for a cruiser, but for how big it is, it's still a decent turning radius. You do get an 11.2 second turn time, which is okay for a cruiser of this size. Now, like the Henry IV, the uh, Brennus isn't a great at turning on a dime ship, but that's a small price to pay for being the fastest cruiser in the game. Uh, enemies will have a difficulty landing shots on you while you pepper them from range. As you'll be seeing throughout this match, I'll be using a lot of HE, kind of do long distance farming on a lot of these battleships. And as you'll be seeing, I'll be doing a lot of throttle juking with this ship, keeping the ship at a fourth or a half, and then just full throttling it with the engine boost. And you'll just be able to dodge ships very easily with this ship using that speed boost. Now, we've already talked about the consumer, so I don't need to go over it again. Um, but, uh, we already talked about the consumables, so we don't need to go over that again. But, yeah, so if you guys are wanting of the build that I use, you can take a look at it on the screen now. I build it for the modules, I build it the speed boost, and the propulsion, and the concealment, of course, the reload, to get that reload down from the ship. Uh, for the skills, I build into... Uh, priority target so I know how many people are aiming at me. I also have heavy AP to build a boost the AP damage uh, As well as having concealment. So if I need to go dark It's easier for me to do that as well as the survivability skills as well So that's the build that I recommend for this ship But let's talk about my overall opinion on this ship. So She makes her return in a new form combining the guns of the Marseille on the hull of a Henry uh, this effectively makes her an AP kiter slash ambusher as she runs around the map making citadels into broadside uh, cruisers. Uh, kind of like a kiting version of the Marseille, but with the more consistent firepower instead of a burst. Uh, the lack of hydro is also a major issue, as I was saying earlier, as pushing into torpedoes becomes a nightmare, especially as you struggle to deal with destroyers. Unlike earlier, though, that was pretty hilarious what i did earlier to that uh poor hayate now i wouldn't recommend running the lighthouse build outside of operations because of your of the poor H he performance on this ship but bow in ships will take much longer to deal with unfortunately and time you sometimes can't afford to spend farming damage so yeah like in this match i didn't really get a good job of being able to showcase the ap I was pretty upset at that. I was really hoping that I would in this match, but I wasn't able to. 
because the AP on this thing is really, really strong. I, just, I love how strong the AP is on this ship. So, um, I will also be streaming today or whenever this video is around. So, you should be able to take a look at me playing this ship or the Halford that also came out as well. So, you guys can take a look at that ship as well. I'll be showcasing both. Uh, so, yeah, you guys can have fun with that. Now, this is the fastest firing almost battleship guns. It's pretty hilarious with how quick the reload is on this ship for them being 305 millimeter guns. Uh, but the lack of hydro and our reliance on enemy broadsides quickly wears on her for sure. I'm trying to be reliant on people showing broadsides, which if anyone's going to show broadside to you, they're going to instantly run away or they're not just going to sit broadside. They're going to do their best to get out of that situation. Now, she can perform well in the right situations, but I feel the Marseille is better as a large cruiser due to her ability to push, having all the guns forward so it's easier to fire, while the Henry is definitely a better hiding ship. So I feel like the uh, Brunus feels she's trying to combine both, but doesn't do a good enough job to justify it. So, as a research bureau ship, right, do I think it's worth the 60,000 research bureau points? Eh, like, there's a lot of other options you can pick for research bureau, like the Ohio is always a strong choice. Uh, and then you have the Cecilia, which is also a really good choice. Like, you have the Colbert or the Palomilio. There's a lot of really strong choices of what you can pick for research bureaus first, rather than this ship. Like, do I, do I think you should get this ship? Like, yeah. Like, maybe it's one of your last ones, as long as you get it before that uh, that tier 9 abomination of a ship that no one even remembers the name of. Like, you, you barely even see that ship around anymore. Like, the Brennus, I don't, like, I'd rather play a Marseille or a Henry over this ship. Like, yeah, this thing feels like a French Stalingrad in a way right like but the guns aren't as good as stalingrad so i'd rather just play a stalingrad at that point right like this ship is very maneuverable you are going to be able to dodge shells with it very easily just on how fast it is and how fast you're able to accelerate you're able to do a lot of damage with while being able to dodge as well and you'll also be able to do a lot of damage with the ap shells as long as people are willing to you know show broadside to you like if you play on the eu server I would definitely say that you're more likely to be able to do a lot more damage with this thing over than on NA. On NA, battleships are definitely going to focus you a lot more, and they're going to be very, a lot more paying attention to you. So it's going to be harder for you to try to get those high damage gains you're wanting unless you're just spamming HE. But a lot of the time, people aren't just going to give you broadside all the time. It's going to be a very rare occurrence as you'll get like maybe a few shots in to be able to do but when you do get those broadside shots you're going to do a lot of damage and you're going to have a blast doing it now you're going to have as high damage as a stalingrad no nothing's going to compare to how strong the stalingrad guns are they're just religiously strong punching holes in legit everything so yes this thing isn't going to be an end all break all for how strong it is like yes like i don't think this ship is the best it's definitely not a ship i will personally play that much because if i want to play this ship right i'll just play a marseille or i'll play a henry because it, it is trying to combine both into one but i'd rather just play a marseille or a henry at that point if i want to get this fixed right is how I would pretty much recommend this ship overall. Because again, 60,000 research bureau points is a lot of points. And it's for the first time people buying research bureau ships. I really don't think this is a high recommendation for the first timers. This is more for people that are just collecting ships or want a little bit more variety in their gameplay. This is the ship for you. For someone looking at this as their potential first time research bureau ship i wouldn't recommend it it's better it's easier for you just to go down the tech tree line of the henry or tech tree train of the marseille go and play those have fun with those uh it's a lot easier and a lot cheaper uh time wise investing than going after this because sixty thousand research bureau points that's pretty much it you have to grind a line six times to be able to get this ship 
Or if you wait and do the double points, you'd have to grind it three times, uh, which you can do with the Hara Goomba, which a lot of people do that. Or they use free XP to be able to get the Research Bureau points that way to make it easier for you for people to be able to grind it they just use their free xp to be able to do that uh to be able to reset every time the double points come along so they don't have to actually play the lines to get the points they can just uh research the line and just reset it research the line reset it research the line and reset it. and when they want the points they just buy the ships and play the ships once and they get all the points but yep, um, that's my review of the Brennus. If you guys have any questions or concerns, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And let me know what you guys think of this ship overall. It, it, I, I find the concept of it interesting, but I would have liked it if, the gu if there was a little bit more guns, right? Um, the fact that there's only seven guns is kind of a downer for how big the ship is. If it would have had nine guns, like nine 305s, I think that would have made this ship from an okay ship to a really strong ship. You know what I mean? It's just that three, that two gun difference, right? Because you get four four guns in the front and a triple in the rear uh, for the seven. But uh, if it would have had nine guns, uh, way higher on the recommendation page. But since it's only seven, I don't really recommend it as much uh to that regard so but yep yeah, um i will talk to you all later and you guys can take a look at the scoreboard and see how the match went and i will talk to y'all later thank you guys so much again for watching and appreciate y'all and thank y'all for subscribing liking and commenting on the video